everyone, welcome back to Rock Security, where you can learn how to protect yourself online and get some insights into the cybersecurity world. If you're new here, my name is Roxana, and today I'm going to talk about the top five wireless vulnerabilities. Let's get into it and see what I've got. Before we begin, don't forget to subscribe, click that notification bell so you get notified anytime I post a new video. Sometimes I talk about Wi-Fi vulnerabilities, passwords, and so many other cybersecurity world. Sometimes I bring you news from the cybersecurity space, and sometimes I talk about books, all things cybersecurity. Very interesting subscribe. Also, follow Rock Security and follow me on Instagram. I post a lot of cyber and more cyber news onto the Instagram page, so don't forget to follow that. And let's get into this video and see what are the top five Wi-Fi vulnerabilities. Number one, the use of default SSIDs and passwords. What is an SSID? An SSID is a service set identifier which is technically your Wi-Fi name. When it comes to the use of default SSIDs and passwords, what I mean is the fact that whenever you install your password, you just let it be the way it is. You don't change the name, you don't change the password to it, you don't change the admin password to it, you don't change anything. So whatever comes from the factory, that's what it is. That is a major thing because those things are easy to find. And if somebody hacks into the database of the company that provides the internet, has your passwords. That's all I'm saying. It's a major vulnerability and you should never let them. If you can, please at least change the password, but I would advise to change both the SID and the Password. Number two, placing the access point, which is your Wi Fi router, into a place where you're easy to access, physically easy to access. What I mean by that, that means that you are placing the Wi Fi router whenever it's extremely easy to access by an outsider and they can steal your password. And this happens a lot when you have strangers in the house or when you host like big parties and stuff like that. If the Wi-Fi is easily accessible, you are putting your Wi-Fi router and your entire home network in danger. Physically, try to keep your Wi-Fi as secure as possible. Right now, we're not inviting anyone over, so I think we should be fine. But the more the world locks, gets out of lockdown, the more we'll have people around. So if you don't physically trust the people that you are meeting with, I would prefer you to somehow make it harder to access your Wi-Fi router. But that doesn't mean that you need to like hide it and put it in a safe. No, just try to be smart about it and try to put it behind things um, that are harder to access and stuff like that. Not furniture and don't put it on the ground and stuff like that because you will cause you will cause interference of the signal. But try to put it like up high or like behind decorations on or something like that somewhere where it's extremely where it's inconvenient to access and it will like if somebody is 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 slightly trying to access it, try to make it obvious that they're doing that. Like they shouldn't be on that shelf sort of thing, or they shouldn't be reaching that up high just to do what. So try to make it like inconvenient for people to access it. Number three. Number three is use of vulnerable WEP protocol. My previous video, if you've watched that, I've explained on my previous video what WEP protocol is and why you shouldn't use it and why you should upgrade it to a newer version like WPA2. Number four, WPA2 crack vulnerability. Well, this gets a bit spicy. It's fun. It's really, really, really fun. WPA2 is meant to encrypt traffic between 
the client and devices and access points and you know and so on so that someone outside the network cannot read into it the wpa2 crack vulnerability will allow the attacker to read the encrypted traffic and in some cases send the traffic back to the network the uk national cyber security center website has put a whole page based on this specific vulnerability and i'm i'm gonna reference quite a lot of these things in here but they are saying that the current information that they have suggests that an attacker would have to be physically close to the target which means that it's less likely for this attack to be done remotely or um, through the internet or something like that that's one two the vulnerability affects all types of wireless devices that use wpa2 wi-fi and as we all know most of us do use that because it's the best implementation of a wi-fi protocol that we have out there three the vulnerability affects both WPA2 personal and WPA2 enterprise profiles. What's the difference between personal and enterprise? Other than the fact that one is home and the other one is company, the personal one usually uses pre-shared key, a pre-shared key that everybody in the household uses to log into the Wi-Fi. Pretty standard. The WPA2 Enterprise uses some sort of external server to authenticate the users. If you want me to do a video on authentication servers for my, my fellow cybersecurity enthusiasts, I will do that. That is extremely, it's, it's a bit more in depth than home Wi-Fi, but I'll get onto that at some point. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell so you get notified whenever I post that video. And also, they are also stating that the Wi-Fi network protected by WPA2 will still be more secure than any Wi-Fi network that uses any other protocol, which means use WPA2, that's better for you so far now. Also, they're also stating that the private Wi-Fi network is still more secure than a public Wi-Fi network such as coffee shops, restaurants, you know, cinemas, all these things that we are craving right now to go to. So the home network and the home Wi-Fi is still more secure than being in public. They're also stating an attacker cannot derive the WPA2 encryption key or the password and hence cannot connect malicious devices directly to the Wi-Fi network. Therefore, they can't, unless they know the particular password and they find the password through any other mean, they cannot connect malicious devices to the network. There is no need to change Wi-Fi passwords or any other enterprise credentials in its response to the cracked vulnerabilities. So it's okay, you don't have to do anything but I'm just making you aware of it so you know. And then the fifth vulnerability is Next Spectra Remote Spectre Exploit. This vulnerability affects microprocessors that perform branch predictions. So it's less about home Wi-Fi, but I've included it into this top five just because it's it's an it's an old vulnerability it's extremely unlikely to happen but hear me out this type of vulnerability when exploited it will allow the attacker to access chosen virtual memory location and thus obtain sensitive data in order for the flaw to be exploited an attacker would first need to convince a user to download and run malicious code or to visit a website where JavaScript is run in the browser. So this technically means that this vulnerability can be exploited by a multitude of attacks such as phishing, some sort of social engineering, some sort of like installation of malicious, malicious code or something like that on the computer. And then the vulnerability can be exploited through the virus that you've installed. I say virus as a very broad thing, don't take it as a virus, that's a virus. I will explain in more details in one of my upcoming videos what's the difference between virus and worm and other 
different things. So this is very unlikely to happen, but I just want you to be aware of it, that things like memory can also be affected and can also be exploited by attackers. And that's it for me. These are my top five. I'm sure there are many other vulnerabilities. It also depends a lot on what sort of devices you have and every vendor has different vulnerabilities into it, but those are quite broad al alongside all the vendors and stuff like that. So please, first of all, make sure that you use WPA2 with WPS disabled. That's the best implementation of Wi-Fi that you can have. And that's what I'm sending you off with. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and click that notification bell. Like this video if you found it useful and comment down below what SSID name you have on your Wi-Fi if you want to disclose it. How's your Wi-Fi called? Let me know. Maybe you have funny names. Or let me know what names you would like to call your Wi-Fi. Thank you for watching. Follow me on Instagram and also, very important, don't forget to stay safe, protect yourself and protect your devices. I'll see you next week with another video on cybersecurity. Bye!